Hi everyone, my name's Emily Teague. I'm a portrait and fashion photographer based out of Brooklyn, New York, and today I'm here to talk single umbrella lighting setups with you. But first, let's talk just a little bit about umbrellas. Umbrellas can make for great lighting modifiers for a variety of reasons. They're on the cheaper side of available modifiers, they're lightweight and easy to carry around, and you can create some really beautiful light with them. When you're choosing your first umbrella, you've got a few options. The two basic options are translucent shoot-through umbrellas, or you can also choose a reflective umbrella that the light will hit into and then bounce back onto your subject. This option can be better for eliminating hot spots. Then you also have the option of deep or shallow umbrellas. Your shallow umbrella is going to have a wider spread of light, so if you want more of your scene lit, shallow might be the way to go. Versus with a deep umbrella, you're going to have more direction and control over that spread of light, and it's gonna be a more narrow spread with more contrast. Another option, if it's a reflective umbrella, is the lining on the inside. It might be white or silver. If it's white, it's going to have softer shadow transitions and create overall softer lighting. And if it's silver, then you're going to get more contrast and more intense lighting. With all these options, I wouldn't try to look at it as what's best for everyone, but specifically what kind of lighting you wanna create and then match that with the options available. For today, I'm going to be shooting with just one type of umbrella to show the variety of looks possible, and it's going to be a medium-sized Fotex soft lighter. The lining on the inside is silver, so we're going to have some contrast and power, but I'm pairing it with a diffusion sock, so it's also going to be on the softer side and create some really beautiful lighting. So let's jump into the studio and see how it all looks. So we're here on set with my lovely model, Asia, who is offered to help us out today. And for this first umbrella lighting setup, it's gonna be pretty basic and easy. All we're gonna do is take our light and move it directly in front of our model, and then either to the left or right of where I'm shooting. Today, I have it on my right. But if it's on the left, it's going to create some catch lights at about 10 o'clock in my model's eyes. And if it's on the right, it should create some catch lights at about two o'clock in my model's eyes. So both ideal placements for catch lights. And it's gonna do a couple more things too. Because we have our light raised up, it should create some nice shadows underneath my model's jawline and overall just be a flattering look. So why don't we take some test shots and we'll see how this looks. Beautiful. So let's look at some of these and see what we're getting and what we like and don't like. So first thing I noticed, this is beautiful lighting. Aisha looks great. Everything looks really good. I am getting a lot of shadows to my left hand side. So a couple options. If I want to keep that kind of dramatic feel, that's totally fine. Or I can also bring in a V flat with a white surface to bounce back some light. And if you don't have a V-flat, you could also use a white sheet of paper, a white wall, really anything white will be reflective and bounce that light back. So let's bring that in now. Great, so let's look at some of these. First thing I notice is we really lighten those shadows. We still have them. So this is still our lighter side and we still have some shadows on this side, which I want, but these shadows are a lot lighter. They're not so dark and I'm not losing detail. So this looks perfect to me. I think I'd be really happy with this as a final shot. Let's move on to another look. Okay, so for our next setup, I still have my white V-flat in because I like that it's bouncing back a little bit of light. And we now have my umbrella and my light almost directly overhead, but also a little bit in front of my model. So Asia's right here and the light's about a foot, two foot in front. And so this way, a couple things are gonna happen. If it was directly overhead, it might hit her brow bone or hit her nose and create some weird shadows, which we don't want. Could create some raccoon eyes. But this way, having it a little bit in front, the light's gonna spill out. And this way, it'll still hit her face. Her eyes are gonna be lit beautifully. It's just gonna be really nice, flattering light. Another difference compared to our first setup is because the light's coming down like this and it's not hitting directly on the background, our background should be quite a bit darker than our first look. So let's take a few test shots and see how this setup looks. Beautiful. 
Okay, so looking at what I got for my first setup where our light was in front and to the side versus this setup where our light is directly above Asia, a few different things. Uh, one, our background is much, much darker because there's not as much light hitting it, which I actually really like because it creates some great contrast between my model and my background. Other things to note, um, the light is really soft and beautiful. I did have her face pointed just slightly up, her chin slightly up, so that we can make sure we're getting light in her eyes. And so we have two beautiful catch lights that look great. The transitions between shadows and highlights are really smooth. Everything here is looking really nice to me. Um, I'm very happy with this. So let's check out another look. Okay, next lighting setup, I've changed a few things. So before we had it directly above, this time I've moved it to the side. And so our light is about two feet in front of Asia. And you can see the edge of the light is right here. So if this is going straight, it'd be right about in front of her. And what this is gonna do is it's still going to feather some light onto her because of that spill. And so this side should be really soft and beautiful light. We're gonna get rid of those shadows that her cheekbones were casting before when the light was directly over above. And then I still have my white V flat on this side. So because our light is more to the side, this side would be a lot more shadowy, but that's going to help lift those shadows a little bit. And the last thing to note is our background, right? So for our very first look, the light was hitting the background directly and it was pretty light. Our second look, it was barely hitting the background at all. It was very dark. This one's gonna be kind of in the middle because there is light that's spilling out onto our background. So we're getting some of that, but it's not gonna be as light as when the light was pointed directly at Asia and our background. So let's try some test shots and see how it looks. So I'm looking at my image from when the lighting was directly above Asia to where it's at now, where it's coming from the side and feathered, and a few things to note. One, when it was directly above, I had those shadows cast under her cheekbones. I've lost those shadows, but I've also gained this beautiful highlight going up her, her cheekbone, which I really love. Um, the transitions from highlights on the right side of her face going on to the left hand side of her face is really soft and gradual, which I love. The only thing I'm not in love with this is her nose is casting a shadow to the left hand side of her face that maybe if I wanted to eliminate that, I could just have Asia look a little bit more towards the light. Um, but really, I think this is a beautiful setup. I love that the catch lights are now at two o'clock versus before they were a little closer to 12 o'clock. I think this is just a really nice, soft, even lighting setup. So this next setup is pretty different from our first view. For this one, I have my light and my umbrella directly behind my background and directly behind Asia. And so what's gonna happen is light's gonna come forward. One, it's going to hit her hair and create a really nice hair light. And then it's also going to hit this white V flat where it's then going to bounce off the white surface back onto her face. And so this should create some really even lighting without many, too many shadows on one side or the other, um, just nice, even flattering light. So let's test it out. So this is a pretty different setup from what we were getting before. One, you can see her face, um, it doesn't have as much structure to it. It's a lot, it, it kind of has this greeny soft lighting feel, which again, all of these setups, it's just your personal style and what feels best for the shoot that you're doing. But things that I love, I love the hair light that's coming in from up above. I love that her catch lights are still beautiful and they're larger too, because it's coming from our V flat where that light is hitting and coming back on her. Um, we don't have as much contrast as we had before. You can see all the blacks are lifted quite a lot, where before they were pretty dark and uh, deep. So I'm thinking this looks really, really nice. And our background is much, much lighter because that light's coming in, it's hitting that white V-flat, and it's spreading evenly across Asia and across that background. So no major shadows here, just nice, light, and airy. Couple other little adjustments to note. I turned the power on my strobe up to max power because I needed a lot more output to be able to bounce off that white V-flat and then come back at her. So when I kept it the same power I had before, it was too dark. And the other thing to note is because I also needed it to be a little bit lighter, I took my aperture from F8 all the way down to F5.6. So that lightened things up quite a bit for me.
for our last look, we have a pretty typical clamshell lighting setup. I have my umbrella kind of tilted, coming straight down at Asia's face. And underneath I have a standard reflector, which is gonna do a couple of things. It's going to bounce light back up into her face and that's going to get rid of the harsh shadows that would be under her jaw. It'll still be um, shadowed, but it'll be lifted quite a bit because of this. And then her face is gonna be perfectly evenly lit, probably with some shadows on the side. But the big difference from what we were getting before versus what we're gonna be getting now is there's gonna be a lot more contrast to this look than the look where it was bouncing off the V-flat into her face where it was more of a flatter light. So let's test this out. Okay, so a few things that I changed while I was shooting. One, I took away my V-flat from the left of Asia because my light is perfectly centered with her and I want that shadow on both sides of her face to be even. The other thing that I did is I added in an apple box underneath my reflector so that it's tilted up a little bit. And that made quite a difference in the catch lights that I'm getting in her eyes. You can see them a lot more. There's more light bouncing back in. So I'm happy with all those changes. So this look has a lot more contrast. Um, her shirt and her hair is nice and dark. That shadow underneath her cheekbones is coming back, which I love. If I look closely, I can see that she has two catch lights, one from our light above and then one from the reflector underneath. Um, the shadow underneath her jaw is still there, but it's light. I really love this look. It's a very structured, contrasty look. Um, and then comparing this to the last one, it's still even lighting on her face, but there's so much more contrast because our light is pointed directly at her. We also have the silver reflector that's also bringing in contrast versus when that light was coming from behind, hitting that white V-flat, losing power, bouncing back and making this kind of flat look. So I'm really happy with the clamshell type look. And there we have it. Those were five umbrella lighting setups using a Fotex soft lighter umbrella. There are really endless ways to play with your light and it's okay to try everything and see what works and what doesn't. Try imagining all the places you can place your umbrella around your model and also think if you want your light to bounce off a light surface and back onto your model or if you wanna add shadows with a dark surface. Let me know in the comments below if you haven't tried one of these setups and you're now planning to or if you have another favorite setup that I didn't cover. I always love hearing from each of you and I make sure to go through the comments every time. So please say hi and I'll see you all next time.